Just a normal Hoi 4 game, so we've got the Socialist Republic of Germany in Panama, and we have the leader of the Comintern, which is the People's Republic of Burundi. I didn't even know where Burundi was. It's right there. <laughs> Learning geography, guys. Hey, I'm Feedback Gaming, and this is Hearts of Iron 4, and we're gonna be playing as Britain. British achievements regular iron man historical on let's go a guilty pleasure of mine is playing mobile games what game exactly raid shadow legends it's a turn-based rpg and it's pretty popular with almost 15 million downloads in the last six months you can download it right here things you can do in raid shadow legends gather a party of orcs undead knights elves or whatever you prefer Explore the 13 campaign levels, or if you have a friend, team up in a clan and play together. I really enjoy the multi-battle mode. It's cool to level up your champions when you're away from your phone, and it makes grinding really easy. Challenging other players in tournaments is sweet. It's a fun to way of leveling and getting extra loot. The game is continuously getting developed, and there are some major updates coming over the next six months, so you'll never tire of the existing content. You can find me in the game under the nickname of Feedback Gaming. Feel free to join my clan. What you're going to do now is download the game. It's in the description of this video. And with that link, you get 50k silver as a bonus and a free epic champion as part of the new player program. Do it! Massive thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Hotly requested achievements for the UK. Probably the most well-known achievement that keeps getting requested. One Empire. Let's tick that one off. New World Order. Once again, hotly requested. Let's tick that one off. The Puppet Master. Easy. Let's get that one done as well. Last for a thousand years. Complete the Imperial Federation. Easy. And the Empire Strikes Back. Once again, just with the mayhem of this video, we'll end up doing this one anyway. As you can probably see here, there are three achievements. Three more achievements for the UK. But we've not seen the last of the UK. We'll be back soon. Soon. Similar to my other achievement videos, like this one, or this one, or this one. Click on the eye in the top right to watch these videos. These videos have to be rigorously play tested to find the most optimal strategy. So this has been attempted probably at least double digits. We've tried this at least 10 times. And for the most part, I think this is the best strategy. And of course, there are loads of loopholes, lots of excuses. We're going to be declaring on the US before they've even got even a handful of divisions. We're going to be taking out Spain through Gibraltar. And we're going to be completing the transition to Mosley's Britain in six months. Six months. It is a record breaker. And that's what we're doing today. It's trivia time. The largest empire per kilometer squared was the British Empire. What was the second largest empire? The British Empire was the largest empire per kilometer squared. But what was the second largest? If you know, comment below. You guys seem to like subscription goals. So what we'll say, 150,000 subscribers by the end of 2019. Can we do it? Have you subscribed? Why are you not subscribing? Please comment below. And if you've not subscribed, just subscribe. Do it. Subscribe. Now. I'm not doing anything right now. Look, we're just sitting watching nothing. You might as well just hit the subscribe button. Go on then. Subscribe. Go on. Subscribe. To make our custom cruiser, we need to wait for advanced catapults. And we also need to merge our fleet. This method. And press K. To exercise. We have very little oil. And the oil will deplete very, very quickly, as you can see. Five days. Run out of fuel right now, but it doesn't matter. We'll just get a slow, steady increase in naval experience. Just enough so we can add those catapults on. King George is dead. F in the comments. Change of course, then we're going to organize the black shirts. Now we're going to go for air doctrine. We are going to go for strategic destruction. We're not going to go bombers, but we are going to spam fighters. So this has got some good bonuses for fighters. Air superiority and extra agility, which we will take advantage of. We've got our catapults now, so we can make the ideal uh, cruiser. So light cruisers. This class. And we add on the catapults. How much XP do we need? We need 15. We're pretty close. We could import a tiny bit of fuel for just a few days. And this will give us a little bit more XP. There we go. And kill that now. All right, we've got the right enough XP now. And we're just going to get this. Oh, no. Nope. This class. And we are going to add on uh, the advanced catapults, which gives it a total amount of 55 surface detection. Wow, we. Right, we're not interesting about exercising the fleet anymore, so turn exercises off, merge them all in London. 
Okay, organize the black shirts is ready. Like the decision. And we are going to go for directly in London. When it comes down to these change ideology mechanics, it always comes down to, do you want to flip ideology quickly by forcing, in this case, a civil war? Or do you want to gradually do it by spending political power? Uh, my advice to you is just go for the one that gives the most stability reduction and it'll fire the civil war when stability drops below 50%. And what's going to happen now? It's going to be... A violent march in Greater London. Minus 66% stability. We dropped below 50%. So now a civil war is coming very close. In the meantime, we are going to go for limited rearmament. Get those civvies. Oh, look what's happened. Okay, so pause right now. This is important. You give yourself lots and lots of time to react. Select our army. Assign them all together. Front line. Offensive order. Select a general. Get a field marshal. This guy's pretty good because he's a brilliant strategist. So we can go for aggressive assaulter, which is very good. Now we are individually going to select our horse divisions and manually move them. We're holding shift, right-clicking in the areas we want to move. One by one, just moving them. Trying to take as much victory points from the UK as possible. Don't ask me why this is the case, but the AI acts really badly in this case. It just seems to position some of its troops in fixed locations. And you can just mop up the all of the UK. As you can see right now. This is pretty much going to be cakewalk. I think this is pretty much it, really. Oh, look, spaghetti. Oh, uh, there we go. All right, and then we go five speed, select the all those. Oh, look at that, beautiful. And then we just play the game out. Keep an eye on what's going on here because you can see the, the the troops get locked in certain positions. Don't let that happen. They all seem to have all the divisions in the exact same locations. There's always seems to be one troop in Bristol, one in Plymouth as well. That seems to be the case every single game. But you can get enough victory points to kill them, and you can grab Edinburgh and Glasgow, and usually the last ones. And they are, yay, we won. Right now, it is the 19th of May, and we have flipped to Mosley's Britain. Was that not an insane flip, right? Do that in multiplayer to make everyone really mad. 100% stability. Oof. Don't ask me why this is the case, but it looks like you have to do the build orders again, so we're going to get to here. Also, there's this really cool decision here called the Mosley Plan, and you should really go for it because you gain extra war support per week, which is something that really struggles with Mosley. He's the champion of peace. Remember that. He just wants peace, guys. Select all your divisions. Move them here. We are going to exercise them. And then we're going to train a bunch more horses. As many as we can. 23. Amazing. Also, your order of all your construction is all messed up as well. At the start of the game, you want to focus primarily on weapons. Then you will focus a little bit more on artillery. And then you'll focus primarily on air. And at that point, you've got the freedom to go in whatever direction you want. The way I do this strategy isn't fixed. If you find you a way of doing it that works better than mine, feel free to comment below. And also, just feel free to mess around and have a bit of fun. I mean, it's not all about getting the achievements. Have a bit of fun as well. Try having fun once in a while. Anyway, the hurricane. Air doctrine, factories, factories, mobile warfare. We're not actually going to stick with mobile warfare. We just want the first one that gives that extra 10% movement bonus. Because we want these horses to be as fast as possible. What we're going to do is stack mobile warfare with speedy horses and this guy, Alan Brook, army maneuver genius, plus 15% speed. So we are pretty much going to uh, take out North America with race horses. It is mainly about speed, but it's also about finding gaps in the front line. Every now and then you will get into some combat and you'll need to break out. And one thing you'll need to break out of initially is these Canadian troops encircling you. Hence the reason why we need to focus on soft attack as well. Next up, we are going to go for the God Save the King, the King. These divisions are mainly trained, so we're going to move them over to Canada and set a front line. All right, God Save the King. Now we need to directly go for bring the Dominions back to the fold. We don't have an empire anymore. Well, aside from the bits in Africa anyway. All the Dominions have broken free for now. Getting some air XP early on is a really good idea, so I'm going to send some fighters to Spain. We could probably grind for aces here by using the ace glitch. Hopefully we'll get loads and loads of uh, aces. There we go. Which also allows us to go for partial mobilization a little bit earlier. Bring the dominions under our fold, which gives us a justification against all of them. So the leader of the allies right now is Canada. And they're all considered minor powers. So if you take out Canada, the leader of the faction, they're the only ones considered a major. And that means they will peace out. Then you can individually pick off South Africa... India, Australia, New Zealand. Going to give it just a few more days to exercise these divisions and then we'll push out from Canada, which we can do immediately. Next focus we're going to go for is we need to go for Unite the Anglosphere. So we need to go for this one, this one, this one, 
and then we can go for it. We'll go for 100 air wing crews. Three, two, one, go. We're going to put them on aggressive too. Hold control, click. Both of them go. And here we go. The Empire Strikes Back achievement. Oh, wow. One of four. Seems to happen the same pan every game. You break this tile and then these ones get locked in. You end up encircling most of the Canadian divisions regardless. As I said before, we are going to rush Disperse Industry 3 way ahead of time. There is a reason for that and you'll find out very soon. Next up, now you've broken there so you guys can push down. Yeah, yeah. Let's go here and then here. And as you can see, I'm trying to wrap around to lock them into Quebec. Grab one division and we'll send them to here. Grab this port and to grab Halifax. There we go. And done. And they're all encircled, the entirety of the army. They will deploy new divisions and they'll probably be pushed into Western Canada. And then we can just counterattack and push them back from there. Every time there's a new division appears, just encircle it and just keep pushing forward. Remember, we're not actually defeating their divisions. We're just encircling them one by one by one as we push forward. Canada is defeated and there's no point just keeping them alive. At this point, so just push for Vancouver and that will make them peace out. There we go. Done. Annex. Training another full army group up of 24. Just to layer it here as much as possible. Okay, I want to use the tactical bombers as well as the nav bombers to do naval strikes. So I'm going to select these. Pop them here and here. I'll take them off their orders, but this is where they will operate when we do need them. We can go for war economy now, and we can also go for Unite the Anglosphere. Japan is now at war with China, and I recommend you do go for an attache. We can work on our AA now as well, add on three, that should be enough for all the divisions we have in the field. When we take out the US, a lot of these grey factories will be allocated, as, a, as you can imagine, the United States is a factory powerhouse. Go here, new general, pop him underneath this field marshal, everyone aggressive and push when you are good to go. Okay, the next part is really important. As the UK, you've got lots of overseas territories, and as you can see, there's a lot of spaghetti supply. My advice to you is to block here, block here, wait a day, and you can see they move around a little bit. So that means most of it is going through this area now. I'm also going to block this area. And as you can see now, most of the supply is filtering through the English Channel through the Western approaches. So this means we can concentrate all of our air power as well as our ships into these key zones to avoid our convoys getting intercepted. For future purposes, max infrastructure here, naval base, as well as air base. We'll come back to that one later. Unite the Anglosphere is done. Now we're going to progress down this area of the focus tree and we're going to go for more factories, more industry, and also get our bonuses for our fighters as well. First off, we need the industrial effort. Let the organization tick up, let the planning bonus tick up, and let's go. As you can see, we are not defending this western side. The beauty of attacking from Canada is that the Americans will concentrate all their forces evenly across their full front line. And all these divisions could be used where the combat's going to be happening in this key region. So in this case, we are in a really really good spot. First thing that happens is they join the French alliance. So we need to deal with this. They will use the submarines to attack this area. So we need to naval strike this zone. Also, we need to get our fleet ready. We can't do a death start right now because we've not got the fuel to maintain it. So as it stands this moment, we just need to use our fleet more sparingly. We're going to go for Andrew Cunningham. And we're going to click the magic button here. Distribute selector step into a balance forces. Boom. And then we're going to select the two subfleets, put them on combo rating here and here. Uh, then we've also got this other cruiser fleet, which will also put those on combo rating as well. And the rest of the other ships, we are going to put those on strike force. We've got insanely unlucky here. It appears that there's no gaps in the front line. What would normally happen, which is funny enough, this is the first time this has ever happened, is there's usually at least one gap in the front line and then you can just filter in all your divisions into one gap in the front line push in but by the looks of it the troops have got so much firepower they can just break their front line anyway and if we make one hole in the front line like here then we can start making encirclements like this the quicker you can defeat america is the better that means you can uh, prevent them from building up remember they are sleeping giant don't let them wake up and there you go we've broken through here just keep cutting them off and deny them ports, deny, deny them victory points, and also just make sure you encircle every single division. That is beautiful. We get access to a lot of extra factories now, so you can just assign them onto the bottom. And also we're going to need lots and lots of artillery, so I'm going to slap that on there. Now we've broken through, don't, don't hesitate, don't pause for a second, just keep pushing. Keep encircling these little armies. 
don't let them build any entrenchment or build any kind of front line. Just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And these forces here are just defenseless. We'll just encircle them and then we'll cut them off and kill them. We can go for industrial concern because we are planning to go for industrial effort. Rush through all our dispersed industries as quickly as possible. Probably get it about 1942, maybe 1941. As you can see, these are the locations where combo raiding is happening. And this is the reason why we naval strike these regions because the weakness of uh, submarines is naval strike and we'll do a lot of damage to them encirclement 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 never let their front line stabilize keep pushing and keep encircling okay now i'm going to focus on fighter command to get fighter 2 and fighter 3 as early as we can which uh is really looking ahead because we're not really going to be taking advantage of air force until we're taking out germany and there you go america has collapsed I've got less than 20 divisions, so we just push now and grab LA. 98, 99, 100, and they are gone. Every now and then you can have a little cheeky look to see how many ships they've got in certain sea zones. And once again, as I was right, they're all concentrating the western approaches. So what we need to do now is get some of our planes, which are all attached onto this general. Go here, go here. Air superiority gives more spotting and do naval strike. We can get rid of all them on the western approaches. Artillery, artillery, AA support, logistics and reconnaissance, elite, get them exercised. And we're going to have a little cheeky look to what we need. Right, we're going to move our new infantry armies to Spain, Gibraltar to go here. We've got a few new traits we can go for too. Infantry expert and infantry expert. And what do you say, infantry expert? Yeah, we could do that if we had command power, which we don't. We'll also go for offensive doctrine and aggressive assault for the extra breakthrough as well. Okay, now we need to make this area accessible because otherwise there'll be no supply going in to here desperately need manpower so extensive born scription a few little bits and pieces we need to do now we need to have a few divisions one two three four five five divisions do a naval invasion of our rear here 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 now the reason we do that is because it's the way supply gets into gibraltar it actually doesn't go in through the atlantic it actually goes in the mediterranean and to control this means that all supply will get to gibraltar moving down our planes now into gibraltar with that air base that we've built and the civil war has just ended so right now spain is incredibly weak and we can justify them on in 25 days yes and of course we need encryption decryption for extra spotting at sea at this point you've got more freedom on the national focus to what you want to do eventually we will need an alliance with italy uh, this is worthwhile because it splits up Germany and it makes, makes Germany significantly weaker. Even if they may have already joined the Axis, Italy will join our faction if we ask them. We're struggling with support equipment, so I'm going to take the reconnaissance off the horses just to get a little bit more support equipment back. And we're going to push here immediately. And we're also going to escort here and here just so we can get naval supremacy in this region. France has left its front door open by abandoning the Maginot. France, very smart. Got access to uh, push here immediately. Make sure you've got your air force in position. And then straight away, we're going to push with you guys. Grab these behind us. And then we're going to push here, 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 and here, here. I was splitting and I was shift clicking. And they will join the French. And they have. Grabbing those towers behind us. As you can see, supply is 14. Now supply is 29. Perfect. For the option now, we've moved and break through one tile. Now we can push and encircle some more divisions. And go aggressive too and push, push, push. Spain has very few divisions, so we can pretty much smush them pretty damn quick. Just mop them up. Oh, look at this. One Spanish division has foolishly charged forward. Got him. There's always a good opportunity here to wrap around these troops and capture the Pyrenees before the French do. That way you can get a nice juicy encirclement. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And we can push in to France by ourselves. The gap in the front line, so I'm just going to go for that immediately. Because we need to make a push now because we're running out of time. I'm going to grab some of these horse divisions, just delete a few of them. That means these troops in the front line here will get equipment immediately, which we'll need to push. Get our planes into position and go. And even with the mountains, we can still make headway and still break them, which is amazing. The Western Front has collapsed, and East is more resistance. But it doesn't matter because we're meeting up with the Germans now anyway. I could take Paris first, that would be really good. And there we go, we grab Paris. 
When you go down this path, France fixes its disjointed government really quickly, hence the reason they've not capitulated right away. So you need to grab the victory points and finally get rid of them. We're going to go for superior firepower now. We're going to take a massive U-turn. We're also going to go for infantry expert, which we should have gone that for that before, but oh well. Rip! And we have the most victory points. This is going to be a nightmare of a peace conference because we want to grab all of it, but we're limited. We've got to be smart. First of all, let's grab as much of the coastline of America as we can. This will prevent... All right, so we've grabbed all of that. So that's all the interior. There is a possibility they could pop it, but we need to pop it because we need to steal the Navy. I'm going to grab all the coastline of Spain. Then we'll start working on France as well. Then we pop it the United States. They can have one tile. And the rest of this gets taken by us. Also, we are going to puppet France. Don't know where they are, though. Once again, for their navy. I think they've lost most of it because we intercepted it in the Western Approaches. But, once again, we'll have the largest navy in the world with all the puppets combined. So that is going to be super handy. That has been a very, very, very good peace conference. All the other bits of land around the world now are owned by Germany. And that just splits up their front line. So the rest of it, you know what, the rest of it, you know what, the rest of it, you can have it. It's yours. Now we focus on making a 40 width juicy fat division with lots and lots of firepower. We've got logistics teams now. Okay, we've got a lot of damaged factories now because we want suppressing America. So we need to just assign all the civvies to the top and then the rest will flood down and repair en masse. Bitfire is done, dispersed Four is done. Let's go disperse five. Add a big fat engine onto the Spitfire as well. Deploy these divisions. Like the entirety of this army group. Convert to the main infantry. 170 days with artillery. Infantry equipment. Oh, wow. Okay, we need to fix that. And, uh, oh, we're actually already working on that anyway. That's good. The Confederate States of America demands transfer of American holdings. They want islands for free? <laughs> No. <laughs> no. All right, we can go for the BSA company, which, which makes guns cheaper, which is going to be useful because we need a lot of guns. Oh, France is in Corsica. Oh, that's good to know. And their navy is 83 ships. That's with our 259 ships and America's 239. We have the largest navy in the world, boys. Manpower is becoming a problem, so we can go for... Imperial conscription, 10% extra non-core manpower. And also we'll go for service by requirement. A few moments later. Not all plans are perfect, but this plan <laughs> has definitely not gone to plan. Germany has gone for the war versus France focus, this one. And because France exists as my puppet, they've declared on me. Um, okay. Okay. It's annoying in two ways. One... We have to deal with Germany a lot earlier than normal. And two, we don't get to use our little favorite little card of Italy not in the Axis, which right now they are definitely in the Axis, no doubt about it. Pull in the extra troops from the UK, not fully trained, not really fully ready, not fully equipped, but we got to take advantage of them. It's manpower at the end of the day. They have significantly more planes than we've got twice as much over the northern France, but we're shooting down way more than they're shooting down of us because we've got a quality advantage. But right now, we just need to sit for a little while and build up planes, build up XP. Yeah, so I'm also going to build some static AA as well. Our industry is so fat right now due to uh, Americans' industry backing us up. Mini opportunities for encirclement, so I'm going to go for that. Yeah, here. Here, here, and here. Encirclement one, armor division, and three infantry for Italy. That's definitely worth it. With expert spotting, and hopefully, maybe even with radar. Hmm. Because we're so far behind on doctrines right now, when we engage, we break off really quickly because we're not gaining enough orb. After bashing our heads against the front line for it felt like age, we've finally broken through. Nine divisions encircled, and one armor division. Once again, definitely worth. The spiteful is finished. Let's max it out. Next thing we'll work on is more air attack. Lots of AA, lots of radar. Yes, there we go. How many divisions do we get? Seven divisions, not too bad. Japan has declared war on Germany. I think it's because they had the Philippines as their puppet. <laughs> okay, Germany's got a lot on their hands now. East and west. And also far east. Now this part's going to be a little bit of a grind. So what I'm going to try and do is just dig in, build lots of AA, build max radar, get air superiority, work down the numbers of Germany, and then hopefully they'll get worn out on the eastern front and I'll make my pushes and slow gains. The only areas I can push are the areas which are have the right terrain. As you can see, the plains and the hills are a possibility. 
And the woods, well, I'll say the woods are pretty good too. Gonna go for the uh, armor designer as well, just so this tank becomes a little bit stronger. I'm gonna rush for the Black Prince, and then what we'll do is get this bonus for the Royal Tank Regiment. And then rush modern tanks. A hey, nice little encirclement here. There's actually something to be proud of. There's at least two armored divisions here. I'm going to push in through the rear and then use the divisions on the front line to support attack. Okay, I think what smart idea would be here is to break off the divisions and then use one for a pincer army and for a more frontline army. So what I'm going to do is grab these guys, which are, for the most part, these three generals here aren't as strong. Not as much attack, not as much experience. So I'm just going to stick these guys on the front line. Well, we've got these armies, which are a lot more trained. I've got significantly better generals. We can use these guys to make front pushes and encirclements. That producing some heavy tanks as well. We'll eventually phase them onto bonds, but for now, that'll be okay. We're going to work towards air land battle just for the extra air superiority bonus so we can stack as much as it as we can. Okay, I'm going to push you guys in the south because we've got max planning bonus. Not aggressive though. Just take it nice and easy. A lot of divisions here so we can split them off in different directions to try and uh, capture key areas. Oh, getting overruns as well. That's because of the air superiority. Beautiful. That is a mighty fine encirclement. Keep an eye on repairs though because we're going to end up having supply issues like this. These divisions are very fat so they're going to have a lot of these problems. There's a lot of divisions here. Beautiful. AI is pushed in the north which is uh, actually going to work in our favor because we're just going to slide through to here. Important that we get over the Rhine because they seem to dig in right at the back of here. There's an important line during the war as well. Alright, all the fleets are out of training now. We can merge them into a big death stack once again. Me Admiral. Convoy raiding here, don't care about that. Convoy raiding here, here, and here. The lanes are choosing to push us in the south, which is, in my opinion, a really good thing. More possible encirclements. I'll break off one of the push armies, send them south, and I'll send them in the other direction. Damn, 52 convoys, nice. Let me just close this little pocket here. I'm paying a lot of attention to this war, because this is probably going to be the hardest fight. When I get onto the Soviets later on, even though the Soviets have got more manpower and industry capabilities, at this point, I'll be so technologically advanced, I'll be able to just steamroll them with, I don't know, heavy tank divisions, probably. <laughs> This is a beautiful corridor I've made into Germany. That's pretty beautiful. We've got a little bit of problem with like spaghetti going on right now though. Like the front lines are so messy. Yeah, we're just going to change the icons for these two armies. I just don't like the fact that they don't pop out on the map. There we go. Oh, Italy, what have you done? What have you done? I'll make a push with everyone now. So much firepower now because Germany's been weakened. Yeah, let's make a special heavy tank division. Not one of those off. And we put a heavy on just a single. We'll convert this army. There we go. We just have enough heavies to do that. I think we'll do it with this with the other army as well. Wrecked. All right, let's end this. Push all the front lines. Go, go, go. All right, knocks out Italy. We can push into mainland Germany, and they're already losing on the eastern front as well. Oh my god, the heavy tanks are so brutal. They're winning on all fronts. Created a Maginot pocket. Pretty low supply too, so they'll de -org. Okay, I think this probably is going to be the final push. Push with the heavy tanks again, and it is a massacre. Berlin, rip. Germany, rip. One thing left now is Hungary. Make sure we get there first, otherwise the Soviets will get more war score. I don't want that. Rip. Okay, we have twice as much war score than the Soviets, so this is looking pretty good. Where do we begin? Holy moly. Some of the states bordering the Soviets have a very high score. So what I might be better off doing is just trying to grab all the ones that are relatively cheap. Yeah, that looks good. All of those ones. Can't help if the Soviets try and pop it though. I might have a look if they do that. But we'll try our best to take all the inland. We've taken all the coastline and this is pretty much what I wanted. Soviets has puppeted the Panama Canal. Right. <laughs> okay. We'll grab this just for the aluminium. It might be beneficial to also grab... These areas in the east as well, just to deny rubber from the Soviets. All right, there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, and the rest of it, I don't care if I'm, it's either islands. So the rest of it, you know what, Soviets? You have it. It's yours. Take it. I have no idea how this has happened, but France has become a puppet of the Soviet Union. You were my puppet prior to the peace conference. How can you trade puppets in the peace conference when you were already my puppet? I. You only got 62 ships, so I don't even care. I don't even so we still have the United States. Uh, is there any point in keeping the United States? Let's have a look. We've only got a few divisions. Yeah, we'll annex them. So I've merged up all of my fleets now. American fleet and the British fleet combined as a whole. And total ships, 541. The only nation to compete with our Navy right now is Japan. With its 300 ships. 
it's tempting right now to start annexing nations and pushing into them but the trouble is now is whenever we attack a nation it's going to join one of the major powers either common turn east prosperity sphere or allies my advice is eliminate all those major powers and then you can move on to well who you want to work on next the dawn of the asian defense league wow and right now we have got five full armies here full with this division eventually we'll move on to modern tanks and we'll get hold of uh, at least one more than one battalion of tank that's for certain okay we've got the fourth cruiser done now so we can make a cruiser and that cruiser has got lots of catapults for lots of spotting opportunities but a one fat battery on there nice fat aa we'll work on better fire control nice big radar biggest engine of course we want the speed and one secondary module just so it's got some light attack as well as the anti-air capabilities and we'll remove all the armor because we want the maximum possible speed the centurion is done let's make a big fat tank max reliability and max gun soviets have declared on japan which is going to make things really interesting time to fabricate on the soviets let's have a look what we're up against 400 divisions Not too bad all right here we go declare how is this going to go down I don't know, but regardless, I'm going to have an opportunity to take an encirclement here, and I'm just going to gobble that up. Oh my god, absolutely demolish them. Alright, forget this. Let's, actually, let's take it balance, and then just go and see how this goes. And it's pretty much green attack bubbles all around. Luckily, the Soviets are almost beat anyway. Alright, and that's the Soviets done. Now we pump out a lot, a lot of Churchill kangaroos, aka Churchill without a turret. Mexico has a lot of divisions, but a lot of them are beaten up. Very low strength. So I'm just going to coordinate all my strength into the south. Opportunity to eat up a few nations now, particularly the ones left off in Europe. The ones in my sights. Finland, Sweden, Switzerland, Portugal. All right, Mexico's gone. And we are done for now. Oof. So now we control most of uh, Europe and the half of Asia and most of North America. The only major powers left now are the Allies in the East Prosperity Sphere. Oh yeah, we do have a Soviet Union that still exists here, which is slightly annoying because that means I have to justify another nation. South Africa has left the Allies and joined Japan. Huh, interesting. Anywho, we're going to declare on Japan now. We have a focus for that. Preempted strategic threat. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to declare on Afghanistan and Iran. And then what we can do is just eat those up in a single peace conference. There we go. Death stack, 600 ships. Admiral, split it off four ways. 150 ships. All of those ships are going to embargo mainland Japan. I was fearful that if I declare on Switzerland that they might join the Allies because they're a democratic faction. But does it really matter at this point in the game? Probably not. And it doesn't even look like they're going to join a faction. They're just going to get absolutely stomped. Yep, and we pieced them out individually. That's kind of cool. Okay. Declare Japan. Initially, we engage them. I'm really curious to see how these first battles are going to go. Fairly decent fleet. And they're all running away. And they all get mauled. Oh, we lose a carrier. What? <laughs> Where did that come from? It must be the AA because they're hitting my ships from above. Okay, I'll use this opportunity with the war with Japan push further and further south through the Americas. All right, let's get rid of Iran and the Iranian faction. Okay, it looks like I can take Afghanistan and Iran in a peace deal, which is perfect. Right, our boys are in position now. Going to make a front line here, and then we can push the Japanese all the way back. This is unfortunately is a bit of a slow process, but the joy is that you're, if you're at war with a major, you get significantly faster justification. But trust me, this method of slowly justifying one by one in 25 days to justify is better than waiting the full 180 days you'd normally have to wait. Okay, working on Norway and Sweden now. They managed to push out in the south, but I don't really care because we'll capitulate before they make any progress. A little bit stuck here. Colombia's bashing against me. Eventually, they'll run out of manpower or equipment or whatever, and then we'll push. Never even thought that South America would be that strong, but just normal Hoi 4 games. We've got the Socialist Republic of Germany in Panama, and we have the leader of the Comintern, which is the People's Republic of Burundi. I didn't even know where Burundi was. It's right there. <laughs> Learning geography, guys. All right, making progress in the east. Whoa, German Navy. Rip. I type in Germany and it sends me to Mexico. <laughs> Needed a bit of rubber, so I've decided to build some synthetics. 
Okay, knocked out the common turn, and because I'm the only one on the other side of the faction, I can mop this all up. Now, this is an ideal situation. That way, we don't have to deal with anyone else. Oh my god, so many countries, though. A little bit confused by this final part of the peace conference. Soviet Union, and they're just all satellite options. Does this mean the Soviet Union is going to still survive? No, the common turn has gone. There are now only two factions, the Allies and the Prosperity Sphere. Okay, now I need to mop up some of these African countries. Push into Nepal, and I'm going to push into Bhutan as well. South America's almost clear, just Brazil next, and then chop up the Caribbean. I don't have to worry about Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, or Burma, because I have a Cassis belly again, so I can instantly declare war. Just worried about the nations that will take a lot longer to fabricate on. In this case, we're going to go for Saudi Arabia, Oman, and Yemen now. All right, status. Currently bombing. Ban. Taking all Asia back. I think left now is the Indian subcontinent. Just going to chop up most of West Africa. Then Brazil. Then the Caribbean. And then we're going to push in Australia, New Zealand. And then that's it. Oh, Madagascar as well. Damn, Algeria's got a lot of divisions. 39 divisions. Damn. Might be because they've got so much steel, so they've just made loads of raw guns. And we'll do a quick naval invasion of pretty much all of Cuba. Cuba's not in a faction, but we're at war with them. I don't know how that's figured out, but oh my god, look at that order. That looks amazing. One way of checking the uh, if the trade network has shut down is check how many convoys. 28 to 33. That doesn't sound much, but if you go into your supply map mode, then look at these overseas territories. No rubber, no aluminium, no oil. Right now, their transport network is completely shut down, and these resources are not taken advantage of. Has Brazil gone? Now I reveal the perfect division. 75% hardness. This could only get better if I had SPG moderns. But apart from this, this is pretty perfect. Managasca is really annoying because it's got lots of divisions, probably because it's got a high pop. And so I have to enable and into multiple locations just so I can get a, a base for landing. And even then, it's not a guarantee this is going to work. Oh boy. So we've landed in Madagascar. We initially got some success, then we got pushed back. And we built a port in the south. And we've just managed to get supply, so we can just hold. And the Madagascans are just bashing their heads against my modern tanks. Yeah, I don't think you're going to do much damage, guys. I was so afraid of the Madagascans, I built forts in the south as well. There's nothing more frustrating than have to redo a naval invasion because the first one didn't work. Okay, Europe. All these nations are capitulated. North America, non. South America, at war with all of them, so that's good. Africa, yep, at war with all of them. Asia, Burma, Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. And I think we're at war with those ones as well. Yeah, we are. Middle East, Oman, yeah, we're at war with all of them. All right, that's good. That is everyone. Uh, there is one thing that, that's making a bit suspicious, though. Portugal still exists, and so does Spain and these islands. I am going to be in a really bad way if they've got even a few divisions on these islands. One and two. Right, we've got our battleships. We've got our planes. We have tanks that are terrible at naval invasions. Can this work? Is it a possibility? Can we work this? Yes, we can. And Portugal, one division, crushed. Commonwealth nations, let's eat you up. I've just realized I've actually not got a justification on Bangladesh, but even though we've got a claim on it. One thing all the Commonwealth nations have in common is they've got a lot of divisions. All right, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Burma, all gone. Decided to take out Japan last because they're a major so that I don't want it to fire the game over screen any time earlier than it needs to. Australia time. Go, go, go. I usually land in Darwin in the north here, but I've decided just to go for the capital. One, we can capitulate them quicker and two, we'll grab good ports and we'll have to spend hours in the north of Australia. This is going to be a bit of a gamble because uh, we don't have any air support because we're way too far from an airbase. And uh, Australia has built a level 10 fort in its capital, even though they've only got 10 divisions. Also, looks like they've just built forts like randomly all across the coastline okay i don't want to capitulate australia before i land into new zealand because ideally i want to get them both in the peace conference so we'll just wait for this guy to land I'm also nervous that because i don't have any land on the philippines i'm not going to get them in the peace conference I don't need all of it just some of it there we go new zealand pretty much b and australia too naval penalty 79 percent yes i know what you guys are probably going to say oh dave why do you just use marines or uh, amphibious tanks very true. I just didn't want to put the production into that and mic do all the micro. All right, that's all the nations in the game, apart from one. This one. Here we go. Can we do the final mission? We have landed, but full air coverage as well, so this should be a complete steamroll, hopefully. All right, we could really do with transport planes right now, just to filter in a little bit of supply. 
I'm gonna make a handful of those now. We're gradually dropping more supply. We need about 14. It's slowly going up and we are repairing and building up the infrastructure from what we damage. This is the only problem when you completely carpet bomb a nation. You end up in a situation where you can't make advances either. Okay, I'm gonna pull a few divisions out because the supply problems here are absolutely cripplingly brutal. There we go, we're in supply. Biggest disadvantage of being out of supply is not the attack penalty, it's the deorging. And when you're low on org, you can't attack because you need to have organization, otherwise you just deorg immediately and you can't do anything. Hence, I'm actually able to do stuff now, which is so sweet. Just keep an eye on what I'm doing here. One division left behind here just to block this straight. Also one division in Hiroshima, just so I have a port and I access this supply. And everyone else goes here to push. And there we go, we've broken them. Use just a little bit of supply, makes a massive difference. Oh, the overruns. Oh, the overruns! Oh! My god, tanks busting over the straight and being successful at that. It's good. Oh my damn. Oh, look at this list. Why isn't there just a take all button? Paradox, why? Done. Nations left. One, the British Empire. New world order. This took so long to get. I think this is about five, six hours. Insane. Oh, apparently I don't actually have one empire because I'm not the faction leader. That will change in a second. But let's have a look at the world. Diplomacy, one state, the British Empire. Look at this boy. Oh my god, is that gorgeous or what? Is that not just peak performance, guys? That is beautiful. Damn, that makes me proud. So patriotic right now. To reinforce the empire, we need subjects. And to do that, we need to bring back a few friends. Uh, we need to bring back all the Commonwealth nations. Where are they? Australia, release as puppet. New Zealand, release as puppet. Create a faction. One empire. The dawn of one empire. And we have one empire. Achievement unlocked. So now we need to unlock the other nations in the Commonwealth. We need Canada and India. It'd be really nice if these were in alphabetical order. That would be really handy paradox. That would be... Pretty dandy. Canada, release. And now we just need South Africa. <laughs> Democratic People's Republic of Chad. Look at that beautiful flag. That is uh, a beautiful flag. Nationalist South Africa. There, you found it, released. All right, these are all the Commonwealth nations. There aren't any of that I've missed, is there? I don't think so. I think this is pretty much the British Empire, isn't it? Create the Pan-American State. Annexes and gains cause on all the American states. Will be known as the Dominion of North America. Oh my god, I'm, I'm playing with fire here, guys. I am playing with fire by hitting that button. The Dominion of North America. <laughs> and uh, New Zealand has broken free. Right. And so has North America. And so has India. <laughs> oh no! This is not what was meant to happen! Angry Canadian man. It's got all of America and broken free. Yeah, all it says is we need to complete the the uh, focus Imperial Federation. It doesn't actually say that we need to actually do a successful conference. So we're just going to see how far we get. The only nation that's chosen not to break free is South Africa. It might be because we annex South Africa directly. I don't know. And South Africa has declared independence. Okay, so to do this now, uh, we're going to have to uh, declare on one of these nations. I'm gonna go for South Africa. Behold, the dump string of South Africa for the second or third time. Okay, I can't go down this one unless I have a puppet, so we're gonna have to puppet South Africa. The puppet, South Africa. Ha! Commonwealth ties. Okay, to do all these focuses, I need to have Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and Canada. Okay, that's cool. Taking out Canada is gonna be a nightmare because they have a lot of victory points now because. They have all the cores on America. All right, we're in position. We're orged. Let's go. The first nuke has been dropped on Mississippi. <laughs> Lol. San Francisco. Boom. To be honest with you, these nukes aren't necessary. I'm just doing it to trigger the American fans. I love you, by the way. Patreon link is below. <laughs> Washington isn't a capital of North America. What could the capital possibly be? That's right. The capital of America is Ottawa. How triggered are you, Americans? Tell me in the comments. How triggered you are. <laughs> uh, I've been playing this game for five hours now. I'm going on six. I'm going on slightly mad. New York nuked. Do you know what? Do you know what, America? This is revenge for that tea party. Let's have a nuclear party, huh? Huh? That's right. Regrets. You have a few. 
Toronto. I'm nuking my own tanks, puppets, Canada. Or in this case, North America. Oh, it's gone back to the name of Canada now. Okay. Oh, I've actually bypassed those ones. And I can't, have, can't even do these ones. Oh, never mind. Let's just hold the Imperial Conference. Let's just pray that this actually works. Imperial Conference of 1954. Historical game, by the way. Discuss defense. Okay, so I guess you have to go through all of these. And you have to go for the option that puts the most political power. And because I've got 2,000 political bank right now, I guess everyone's going to be down for this. Yes, they are. Discuss trade. Yes, trade. Good idea, right? Together we shall prosper. Talk about economy. Sure. The reason Canada's relations are like really, really low. They have claimed our territory. Is that because I justified on you? Oh my goodness. You're impossible to please Canada. I was unaware why, but it looks like this achievement isn't going to be possible due to something that I did in the game. If you guys have any luck, comment below and let me know what you did differently because I can't get this achievement to fire now. The option to go for Imperial Conference seems to be grayed out. Oops. Is that everything? Nope. We have one more achievement. The Puppet Master have at least 51 subjects. You know how we're going to do this one, right? Release everyone. Pakistan, Yugoslavia. You get the idea. Okay. Is, is that enough? Yep, I think that is. There we go. Achievement unlocked. Thank you so much for watching this video and getting this far in the video. If you made it this far in the video, comment below and say, I have formed the One Empire. Let me know. Comment below. We're heading for 150,000 subscribers. If you guys would help me out and get me over that milestone, feel free to bang that sub button. If there's a reason why you're not sub, let me know below. Apart from that, have a good day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.